Uh, originally, virtual machines made cloud-based uh, cloud multi-tenancy possible, allowing multiple inst isolated instances to run securely on a single machine via virtualized hardware. But VMs are resource intensive, require hardware extensions, and typically must run a full OS instance within each VM. As a lighter weight alternative, containers were created. Containers use an extensive array of namespaces within the OS to virtualize instances directly on a single host OS. Because of their design, containers offer a low resource footprint, fast startup times, modest hardware requirements, and have minimal I.O. overhead. Although there are a lot of advantages to using containers, a major disadvantage is that because all of the containers are running on, a, on the same OS, if the OS is compromised or malicious, all the containers are compromised as well. Given the enormous and complex code bases of OSs, it's inherently difficult to trust that the OS doesn't contain a vulnerability that puts containers at risk. To resolve this and enable containers to run securely on an untrusted OS, we introduced Blackbox. Blackbox is a new container architecture that provides fine-grained protection of application data confidentiality and integrity. Blackbox removes the need to trust the OS, runs unmodified applications, and only requires modest modifications to the OS. To protect and control memory access, Blackbox introduces a Container Security Monitor, or CSM. The CSM is a small monitor running at a higher privilege level than the OS that enforces container security guarantees. The diagram here shows where, shows where the CSM fits into the overall architecture. In user space, you have the container and container engine running. Below that, you have the OS. And below that, at a higher privilege level, you have the, C the container security monitor. The key feature of the CSM is that it introduces the concept of separate and independent physical, protected physical address spaces to the system to isolate containers. A protected physical address space is a separate and isolated set of memory pages. Memory that is within a protected address space cannot be accessed by the OS or any container not assigned to that address space. Each container is assigned a protected address space, ensuring memory is isolated from the OS and other containers. The OS remains responsible for, al for allocating memory, but once the OS allocates memory to a container, the CSM ensures that the memory is assigned to the container's protected address space and is long no longer accessible to the OS. Not only does the OS remain responsible for memory allocation, it also continues to, be re to remain responsible for accessing and managing devices directly. It's still responsible for allocating resources, scheduling tasks, handling interrupts. Essentially, all the responsibilities of the OS remain with the OS and not the CSM. The CSM doesn't perform any kind of virtualization of resources or resource management. Because of its limited scope, it's able to be kept small and simple. One of the main functionalities of the CSM is supporting protected physical address spaces. In order to do this, it needs to be able to switch among them as the system runs. If a container process is about to run, the CSM needs to <clears throat> make that container's protected address space active. And similarly, if the OS is about to run after running a container, the CSM needs to hide that container's protected address space. To achieve this, the CSM interposes on all interrupts and exceptions so that it can identify what was running and what is to run next. This allows it to switch among the container protected address spaces. In addition, to protect the OS from seeing container state, uh, seeing, can seeing container state and CPU registers and tampering with them, the CSM saves and hides register state from the OS. Due to the added protection of the CSM, the, OSM, the OS doesn't have, the, have access to perform some of its normal operations. To enable these operations, as well as to support secured containers, the CSM provides the OS with an ABI. For example, the OS routinely has to break copy and write pages and copy the page's data to a new page. However, with Blackbox, the OS can't access container memory, and so it can't perform this operation. To resolve this, the OS is modified so that when it needs to break a protected page, it makes a copy page call to the CSM instead of trying to perform the cow break itself. With this call, the OS passes the address that needs to be copied and what's to be copied to, and where it's to be copied to. The CSM verifies that the destination page doesn't already belong to a protected a physical address space, then moves it into the container's protected address space and copies the contents of the source page. As another example of how the ABI is used, I'll go over how the set PT call is used during a page fault and how memory gets added to a protected physical address space. First, a page fault exception occurs in the container. Control goes to the CSM, allowing it to interpose on this exception. The CSM sees that the active process is in a container, so it hides the container's protected phys physical address space and protects CPU registers. Control is given to the OS, and the OS handles the fault. 
However, the CSM needs to be able to see all page table updates in order to move allocated memory to a container's protected physical address space. In order to do this, it marks all container process page tables as read-only to the OS. This prevents the OS from updating the page tables directly, and so it instead is modified to make a set PT call to the CSM when it wants to update a protected page table. So the OS calls set PT to update the page table. During the set PT call, the CSM moves the page from the OS accessible memory to the container's physical address space, then updates the task page table with the entry. The set PT call then returns, and control is returned to the CSM as part of its exception interposing. The CSM sees that the container task is about to run again and makes the container's protected address space active. Control is then returned to the container with the newly allocated page in the, contain in the container's protected physical address space. So although we want to protect containers, we still want them to be able to interact with the OS and make use of the OS services. However, memory references passed via system calls from the container to the OS are inaccessible to the OS since that memory only resides within the container's protected address space. To remedy this, as part of the CSM interposing on system call exceptions, the CSM copies system call arguments to and from the protected address space and OS accessible memory. It then updates the system call arguments with references to these new OS accessible locations before giving control to the OS for it to handle the system call. Prior to returning control to the container, any data being returned by the system call uh, is copied from the OS accessible memory back into the protected physical address space. Processes within a container may want to communicate and make use of the OS's IPC services. However, doing so would expose that data to the OS. So to allow processes to securely make use of IPC, the CSM encrypts and decrypts IPC communication as part of its interposing on system calls. File descriptors that relate to IPC are tracked, and if a process tries to, for example, read or write to one, the data is encrypted by the CSM before giving it to the OS and decrypted by the CSM before delivering it to the other process. For example, a parent process and a child want to communicate over a pipe. The parent process makes a write system call to the right end of the pipe, which traps the CSM before the OS can handle it. As part of the CSM system call interposition, it checks to see if the file descriptor being written to has been recorded as being affiliated with IPC for the task. The CSM will have recorded that this, this info during the parent's initial pipe call when the pipe was created. Since the file descriptor is IPC related, prior to copying the write buff to the OS accessible memory, the CSM first encrypts the data. The OS is then given control to handle the write system call using the encrypted data. Similarly, the process is, this process is repeated for the child's read call, but with the CSM decrypting the data prior to returning it to the child. Although we protect container memory, the OS is still able to manipulate the container through malicious memory mappings and page assignments. For example, when a task calls mmap, instead of returning a, val a valid new memory region, it could return a mapping that overlaps with the task stack. The task can then write to that mapping and unknowingly corrupt its own stack. To protect against this, the CSM tracks memory, ma <clears throat> memory mappings while interposing on system calls like mmap. The CSM can then ensure that mappings are assigned by the OS are always disjoint. In addition, since the OS has to ask, ask the CSM to update the page tables on its behalf, the CSM can verify that newly allocated addresses assigned during a page fault belong to known memory regions. To actually implement Blackbox, we chose the ARM architecture for its growing use in PCs and cloud computing, along with its dominance in mo on mobile and embedded systems. <coughs> the ARM architecture can contain support for VMs via the ARM virtualization extension. This in introduces four uh, privilege levels to the system, EL0 to EL3, with EL3 being the most privileged and designed for firmware. EL2 was designed for the hypervisor to run, EL1 is where the OS runs, and user space is EL0. To implement the CSM on ARM hardware, we repurposed the EL2 hypervisor privilege level to run the CSM, giving it control over the OS. The CSM runs at the hypervisor privilege level, but is itself not a hypervisor and performs no hardware virtualization. The OS continues to access devices directly. Because of its limited scope, the CSM is able to be kept small. In our implementation, the CSM is fewer than 10,000 lines of code, over half of which are part of a verified crypto library. For the implementation of protected physical address spaces, Blackbox repurposes nest nested page tables that come with hardware virtualization support. Specifically, we implemented Blackbox, since we implemented Blackbox on the ARM architecture, 
we make use of its nested page table implementation, known as stage two page tables. Traditionally, nested page tables are used to, al to allow a VM to perceive a different physical address layout than what actually exists. Nested page tables add an additional level of translation to accomplish this. For example, in a VM, the OS believes it's mapping virtual addresses to physical addresses, but in actuality, it's mapping virtual addresses to intermediate physical addresses. These intermediate physical addresses are then mapped to the actual physical addresses by a hypervisor, allowing it, allowing it to control what memory is allocated to the VM. Blackbox doesn't use nested page tables as originally intended. Instead, it uses them simply for access control via its protected address spaces. The CSM assigns each protected physical address space a separate NPT. Then, when interposing on OS interactions, the CSM adjusts which NPT is active to protect container memory from the OS. As said, the CSM is not a hypervisor and offers no virtualization. Instead of using NPTs for virtualization, they're just simply used for partitioning. All intermediate physical addresses are mapped directly to the actual physical addresses via the identity mapping. For example, an intermediate physical address of address one will always map to the actual physical address of address one. To support the CSM and allow it to interpose on all interrupts and exceptions, we need a way to force the system to trap to the CSM on every exception. Hypervisors traditionally accomplish similar functionality by trapping interrupts, interrupts to themselves and then injecting virtual interrupts and exceptions to the VM. However, this requires a significant amount of additional complexity. Blackbox avoids this complexity through a different approach. The hardware is configured such that all exceptions are routed to the OS, as is typical when you're not virtualizing. Then the OS's exception vector table is modified such that its first and last instructions are calls to the CSM's ABI's enter OS and exit OS calls. During boot, the CSM verifies the table's contents and marks it, makes it read-only to the OS. This way, every exception starts with an enter, enter OS call to the CSM and ends with an exit OS call, allowing the CSM to interpose on all exceptions. This implementation means that the CSM has to be trapped to, uh, trapped to on every exception at least twice. It seems like this performance cost would be prohib prohibitively high. However, ARM's hypervisor level, EL2, has its own hardware state with separate system registers and control, control state from the other levels. This means trapping to EL2 can be very cheap, essentially only requiring the saving of general purpose registers. This allows the CSM to interpose with limited performance overhead. When interposing on context switches, the CSM needs to be able to identify what task was previously running and what task is going to run once control is returned to user space. To achieve this, the CSM maintains an array of info on all tasks in protected containers. The CSM then requires that the OS store the, the, store the index into this array of the current task running in the generally unused TPIDR EL0 register. Before the CSM returns control to the user space, it uses this index to access the array and retrieve information on what task is supposedly about to run. Notably, it looks at the stored address of that task uh, page table and compares it with the address in the base page table register. If they match, the CSM knows that a protected container task is about to run and switches to that container's protected address space. To evaluate Blackbox, we ran it on both an AMD Seattle ARM server and a Raspberry Pi 4 Model B. We then measured the performance of various application workloads. We measured the performance of Hackbench, Apache, HAProxy, Kernbench, Memcached, MySQL, Nginx, and NetPerf. The solid bars indicate results for the Raspberry Pi 4, and the overlaid outline bars indicate results on the AMD Seattle ARM server, as indicated in the bottom left. On the y-axis, we have the performance relative to the unmodified OS running the applications directly without a container. We compare, we compare the performance of Docker containers running on the unmodified OS with the performance of Blackbox, including the cost of encrypting IPC communication. In most workloads, the, the performance is within 15% of native. A notable exception to this is Hackbench. Hackbench forks thousands of processes and constantly context switches between them while doing very little work. In addition, it sends single byte IPC messages that need to be encrypted and decrypted. This is atypical of real application workloads whose performance is much less affected. In conclusion, we have created Blackbox, a new container architecture providing fine-grained protection of application data confidentiality and integrity on an untrusted OS.
Blackbox achieves this by introducing a container security monitor to create separate and independent protected physical address spaces for each container, all with a small TCB. Finally, we have demonstrated that Blackbox can support unmodified, un unmodified containerized application workloads with modest overhead. Thank you, and are there any questions? <laughs>